You know, one of the most well-known portions of the Bible is Psalm 23. It starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. And you're probably familiar with those verses, whether you're a churchgoer or not. It has brought a lot of people comfort over the years, through the centuries really, going through difficult and stressful situations when you feel life is out of control. You know, the part I really love is it says, lying down in green pastures and being led beside still waters. You know, it's an amazing word picture. In his new book, I Am, Encounter the One Who Gives You Purpose and Peace in a Crazy World, Pastor Matt Fry from Clayton, North Carolina, joins me to help us find peace in this crazy world that's out of control. Matt, it's nice to welcome you to 100 Huntley Street. It's great to be here, Greg. Now, before we get into the book, and it's an amazing book, I've had opportunity to read it, and as I was showing you to prove that I had read it, <laughs> I've, I've marked it up. It's a, it's a very practical book you. because your story is in there and some very special people in your life, your wife, your family, and also people in your congregation. What gave you sort of the impetus to write this book? Well, um, years ago, I realized when I was kind of in between jobs and I'd been a youth pastor at a church and then I no, I no longer was on a church staff. You were fired, right? I was, yeah, fired. Okay. Right. That, well, you were released to do what God released wanted you to do. A, a nice, why don't we, uh, it's not a good fit, so why don't we find another place to go? And so I was in this no man's land, ended up, working as a part-time custodian. And one of the places I cleaned was a police station. And uh, I'll never forget that moment because you have the policemen have to be there when you clean their uh, facility because for security. So I had to, I asked the, the policeman, I said, excuse me, sir, can I get that trash can for you? And here I am with a seminary degree and 10 years of uh, ministry experience and, and I worked at some rather humbling. Yeah, prestigious churches. And so here I am, excuse me, sir, can I get that trash can? And he looks at me and he says, wait a second, don't I know you? Aren't you the youth pastor of the church down the street? Wow. And I was like, well, not anymore. And I awkwardly changed the subject. And, and through that, which sounds like a, 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 a devastating story, but through that, it caused me to go into who am I? Like I'm no longer Matt Fry, the youth pastor, but who am I? And when I dove into the word of God and, and Paul says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Yeah. I'm like, yes, Lord, I want the power. And then it, but then it says that you must be willing to fellowship in his suffering. And I realized that's what I was going through. And, it, and it, I had this revelation that when I encounter the great I am, that's when I discover who I am. I'm Matt Fry, a Christian who just happens to work at a church. Or I'm Matt Fry, a Christian who just happens to serve as a pastor. Uh, that, being a pastor it does, is, does not define me. But, but our identities get wrapped up. I mean, sure. as men, and I know even, you know, reading your book and just in some, just some recent challenges that I went through is your identity is so much in what you do. Sure. And we can get up as preachers and with great enthusiasm say, my identity is in Christ. But sometimes it's when those things are taken away, it just kind of changes. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with saying I'm a pastor and, yeah. you know, I, I'm a businessman and so forth. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, but when we find our identity, in our position, our title, sometimes our past, our past can define mm. us. Past failures, past successes, people's words have been spoken over us, uh, maybe as a child, uh, that are often negative or destructive, and we carry those labels into adulthood, and so we find our identity in that. So many people are trying to figure out who they are, and but you, we will never discover who we are until we discover who Christ is. And that's why uh, I believe this book is really hitting where a lot of people are living today because people are hungry for the truth. They don't, they don't know where to turn for hope. They don't know where to turn uh, to find direction in life. And Jesus, he gave us answers before we even knew there was a question. So we've got who we are right. in Christ and who he is. Exactly. I mean, those, those things come together. Yeah, there's a direct connection between God's view of me and my view of him. So when I understand how he views me and then I see him as the great I am and I have a fresh encounter with him, which is what happened to me years ago and even many times since then, because it is a journey, it's not just a one-time experience, then that's when I see, oh, when I encounter the great I am, that's when I discover who I am. And then the second part of that is equally as important. Then we declare who we are in Christ over our life. And you, and you have that in the book. Right. Now, what we started out talking about Psalm 23. Right. I am mm -hmm. the shepherd. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we think of God and you put it in your book as, well, he's mean. And if I become a Christian, he's going to be really restricted. But yeah. that's not the way he is. Yeah. Well, there's seven I am declarations. And as you mentioned, one of them is I am the good shepherd. And so whenever we go through challenges, the question in that chapter is, how do you know whom you can trust? Right. Yeah. 
and nobody knows really who they can trust. And so when you understand that I have a good shepherd, not, he's not just a shepherd, he's a good he's shepherd. He's a good shepherd. He will guide us, he will, he will direct us, he will protect us, he will provide for us. Then if people hurt me, and hurting people hurt people, and I'm sure we've hurt people and people have hurt us, then sometimes the trust issue can be uh, uh, impacted by that. But then when you understand that he is the good shepherd, then we can still trust people knowing that it's possible we might get hurt again. But I have a savior who says I am the good shepherd. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. You know, when I was uh, growing up as a kid, I went to a Lutheran church and they had the picture of Jesus with the sheep. And it's something that has always stuck with me. Yeah. When we come back, I want to explore a couple of the more I am, uh, the vine, mm -hmm. I, that's a key one, right. light and the door. I, I mean, and, and for the rest of me, you have to get the book. But Matt, Pastor Matt Fry will uh, continue to join us in conversation when we come back.